Make sure he's done some video. That's told me that I just got the signal. Oh, did we get it? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good morning. morning. And welcome to worship with Mount Auburn Presbyterian Church on this Trinity Sunday, June 12th, 2022. Whether you are joining us in person in the sanctuary or joining us online uh, from wherever you are, uh, we are glad that you are with us and know that you are welcome here exactly as you are. As you look around the sanctuary this morning, you will notice all of the bright and colorful rainbow flags as we officially kick off our Pride Month celebrations here at Mount Auburn. And while we celebrate the lives um, of LGBTQIA people every week, we do it particularly this month of June. And one of the big happenings um, this month at Mount Auburn will be our presence in the Pride Parade and Festival on June 25th. Um, there are several ways and opportunities that you can join us in that, uh, from joining and marching with us in the parade on that day, to helping to volunteer and staff our booth at the festival. We are in need of volunteers, um, so if you think you would be able and like to do that, there is a link in the newsletter to sign up or talk to Pastor Stacy or myself, and we will get you filled in on one of the needs. Next, um, there will be an opportunity to make uh, signs together celebrating the LGBTQIA plus community um, next week or this, this week, no, next week. Dates are confusing. Um, to make signs together um, in the treehouse space, 
which um, we've been learning about over the years. If you haven't been down there, it's a great opportunity to see a space um, that is dedicated to LGBTQIA plus resources and community building. And that will happen on June 22nd or June 24th between 6 and 10 p.m. I know that's a large chunk of time. It's not come for four hours and make signs. It's come as you are able, connect with people. Uh, the Social Justice Committee will be providing markers and poster board to make your signs. Looking beyond Pride Month, I know that that seems far away. Um, into the rest of the summer, we have some exciting opportunities coming up. The Earth Care team is teaming up with the Connector Art Gallery for a summer show entitled Sacred Places in Nature. Building off our Lenten theme of You Are Here, this art gallery will be an invitation to the whole Mount Auburn community, however you're connected with us, um, to submit images of meaningful places um, in nature to be displayed in the gallery um, in August and September. Everyone will be invited to participate in this. It won't be that complicated. Don't worry, you don't have to be a professional photographer to join um, in this. And you'll learn more about this next week in worship, but we wanted to just put the idea out there to get people to thinking about uh, places that have been meaningful to them, that they have connected with God in, and maybe sort through some photos that you have um, and think how you might want to contribute to the uh, installation. But Definitely more information coming, just getting the ball rolling. Speaking of photos, one more announcement today. Um, we are working on getting a new church directory together. A new one that will contain photos of all of your wonderful faces so we can really get to know who each other are and for visitors to be able to put a name to a face. That will be wonderful. So as we are getting this set up, um, we invite everyone who is in our current directory to go and check your information. Make sure that it is correct. If you need to update anything, let the church office know. And then we will be inviting everyone to submit a JPEG image of yourself, your family. Doesn't have to be professional. Can literally be a selfie if you want. But that way, names and faces are going together. So check the newsletter for more information about that. All right, I think that's all for announcements. Good luck. Let's take a moment, settle ourselves into this place of worship. Feel your feet on the ground. Feel your body in your seat supporting you, holding you. And imagine now that instead of that seat, it's the love of God holding you steady and firm and loving you exactly as you are in this moment. Come, let us worship together. Come, let us worship God.
Good morning, all. Would, would you please join with me in the call to worship this morning as we read responsively? In the beginning, when God drew a circle on the face of the deep, wisdom was there rejoicing, delighting in our humanity. In the beginning was the Word with God, and the Word was God. And the Word became flesh and lived among us, full of grace and truth. In every time and place, God's love is poured into the world as the Holy Spirit challenges and comforts us. Come, let us worship our God, who creates, redeems, and sustains us. notice we added a couple of verses about <laughs> learning and growing, and that is because we, there is no finish line to our faith and to our development. Uh, we are always learning and growing, or we should be, because there is always space for us to know more, to understand more, to do better. We never have it all together, even when we have the best of intentions. And so we come before God confessing that we are not finished products. Will you confess with me? God of the universal and particular, within your own life, there is mutuality, equality, and interdependence in diversity. Though we are made in your image, we confess that we don't always value your image in the rich diversity of our humanity. Instead of seeking mutual welfare and the common good, we seek our own gain. Instead of living in equality, justice, and respect, we construct systems that are unjust. We devise ways to elevate ourselves over others, we allow differences to divide us. Holy God, forgive us. 
restore in us and in our life together the divine image you intend. Make us tender in mutuality. Make us generous in equality. Make us grateful in diversity. Amen. The good news that we celebrate together is that God loves us exactly as and where we are, and also that God does not leave us there. God is always offering us a new opportunity for growth and change and transformation so that we might better embody Christ in this world. Believe this good news and live in its peace. And we share signs of peace with one another to begin that process of spreading peace into the world. The peace of Christ be with you. Please share signs of peace with those around you. Would you like a pride rib? announcement. Uh, apparently we're having a parking situation. If you parked uh, kind of over to that side behind our neighbor's house in his spots, you need to move your car right now. Like right now. <laughs> Please go. Okay. That's what it was. So when we consider the pinnacle of wisdom here today in Proverbs chapter 8, verses 1 through 4 and 22 to 31, that's found on pages 590 and 591 in your pew Bible, hear the wisdom of creation. Doesn't wisdom call? Doesn't understanding raise her voice? On the hills along the road, at the crossroads, she takes her stand. Beside the city gates of the town, in the gates themselves, she cries out, to you, people everywhere, I'm calling out to you. 
I cry out to all of humankind. God gave birth to me at the beginning, before the first acts of creation. I have been from everlasting, in the beginning, before the world began. Before the deep seas, I was brought forth. Before there were fountains or springs of water. Before the mountains erupted up into place. Before the hills, I was born. Before God created the earth or its fields or even the first clods of dirt, I was there when the Almighty created the heavens and set the horizon just above the ocean set the clouds in the sky, and established the springs of the deep, gave the seas their boundaries, and set their limits at the shoreline. When the foundation of the earth was laid out, I was the skilled artisan standing next to the Almighty. I was God's delight day after day, rejoicing at being in God's presence continually rejoicing in the whole world and delighting in humankind. The wisdom of the creator for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Uh, further information before the children's message. Uh, one of the cars is silver and has a license plate JGA5560. Another car ha is red and has a license plate JST3136. If that is any of you, please move your cars. The neighbor is threatening to tow, and he will do that. Anyway, uh, young and young at heart, you are invited to come forward. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Only one young at heart today. Hello, Jay. Oh, good. You're having company. <laughs> so, have any of you ever had growing pains? Yeah? Do you know what growing pains are? Sort of. It's where when your body grows so fast that your bones kind of ache. Yeah, it doesn't feel really good, right? <laughs> No, it doesn't feel good at all. I can imagine you've had a couple of them in the last couple of years, because you have grown quite a lot. Uh, yes, it doesn't feel very good. Sometimes uh, there are growing pains that happen when that aren't like just in your bones, but like if things change, it's not very comfortable. Just like when your body changes, like if the church changes, sometimes that's not very comfortable. We do something different, or someone different comes who isn't like we're used to, sometimes it doesn't feel very good. We sing songs that we don't know, or we put something up here in front that people don't, aren't used to, and it sometimes feels kind of funny. But when you have growing pains, it's because your body's doing what it's supposed to do. It's growing, it's getting healthy, it's getting bigger, right? So you have to get through it because your body's doing something good. And that's the same in church. Sometimes things change and they're not very comfortable, but it's what the body is supposed to do. The church is supposed to grow and change, and that means it's getting better. Let us pray. God, help us when we don't feel so comfortable, when our bodies ache, and when this body, the church, aches. Help us to know that you are growing us and doing something good. Amen. Thanks for to keep open
got to keep hope alive in this world today. So every day we've got to pray on, pray on. We've got to keep hope alive in this world today. So every day we've got to pray on. We've got to keep hope alive in this world today. So every day we've got to walk on, walk on. We've got to keep hope alive in this world today. So every day we've got to walk on. We've got to keep hope alive. Our second scripture reading comes from the book of Romans, the fifth chapter, verses one through five. Listen now for the word of God. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand, and we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, But we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. The word of God for the people of God. Before I jump into the sermon, last announcement to move cars if folks still haven't done that. Always something. They're moved? All right. Everything is good. (laughs) When 2020 hit and the world shut down, many of us found ourselves staying home a large portion of the time, unable to visit and hang out with family and friends, unable to go to work, pretty much unable to go anywhere or do anything. I, so I like so many others, dove headfirst into the world of arts and crafts and hobbies. And while I didn't get into bread making and sourdough starters, I did dabble in making macaroons and muffins. I gave making all kinds of jams and jellies a go. 
I got into embroidery for a hot minute, though truth be told, I don't think I finished one project, <laughs> though I started at least 20. And as the pandemic rolled on, I took up cross stitch and poured resin pieces for a while, you know, thought I'd give candle making a go and crochet, and certainly a few others along the way. Because I love and value art and the act of creating so much, I greeted each of these new endeavors with enthusiasm and delight. Because there is so much joy in the possibility that in the end, you'll have something good to eat, or something pretty to look at, or something warm to wrap yourself up in as you watch TV at night. And while I have successfully made macaroons of sorts, though certainly lacking in the aesthetic department, and I have a crochet blanket to warm my lap, though don't look too closely at it, and there are a lot of colorful art pieces to look at around my house now, I am certainly no expert at any of the things I picked up over the last two years. I would work on a new thing for a bit and would make leaps and bounds in my learning when I first started, but inevitably the learning curve would steepen, progress would slow, and I wouldn't as easily see improvement as I went along. Or I'd realize you know what, my wrist is tired from the motion of making endless chains of yarn, so I'd stop trying and move on to the next thing, because I was certainly not going to put in the effort and countless hours that it takes to actually learn and cultivate a new skill. A love for arts and crafts, a creative eye, and even some natural artistic gifts are only a fraction of what it takes to truly master a skill. Cultivating a craft or cultivating a skill doesn't happen overnight. It takes a lot of effort, a lot of failures, practice, study, learning from community, perseverance, listening to people who know more tell you when you're doing something wrong, it takes a willingness to be corrected and guided as you go, and a willingness to grow in the art, even when, especially when it gets hard. Every craft person, artist, musician, etc., knows this. But this lesson is for all of us, even those of us without a creative eye. We can't just wish, want, and intend our way into doing something well or having the outcome we desire. No matter how badly you want those macaroons to look like they do on the great British baking show, <laughs> you can't just do it because you want to. And this spills over into every aspect of our lives. In our jobs, many of us are required to do continuing education so that we are actively cultivating and fine-tuning our skills, no matter what they may be, because we know things change in our fields of expertise, and we want to stay up to date with the latest new things so we can be effective and do our jobs well. It spills over into our relationships and our friendships. We have to put in effort to maintain and strengthen them in many ways. We have to show up day after day, even when it's hard, even when it costs us something, even when we think we don't have the time, we have to show up to maintain those connections. <coughs> the last two years, all of us put in so much time and energy to learn Zoom and a myriad of new tech things there were a lot of bumps along the way. We certainly didn't get here quickly and without effort and without lots of help from lots of different people. But now here we are, able to live stream worship and host hybrid meetings like a well-oiled machine. Kind of well-oiled. <laughs> the oil light might come on from time to time. <laughs> Anyway, but we are continuing to learn and improve how we do things every single week. And 
this is true for our faith lives as well, and how we go about living out our core values and beliefs. And while, like Paul's letter to the church in Rome that we heard this morning reminds us that we have been justified by faith and have access to the goodness of God's grace along the way, living out our faith well, it doesn't just happen overnight. We don't just say the things we believe and then simply go about living them out in real, authentic ways that are actually doing what we hope and want and desire. We don't just say the things we believe, and then be free from the struggle and work and practice it takes to do those things well. Our faith can be real. Our faith is real and deep and true, and for many of us, the most important aspect of our lives. But that doesn't mean we will instinctively know what to do or how best to do it doesn't mean we will instinctively know how best to actually love our neighbors as ourselves, or how best to work for justice or defend the vulnerable, protect the marginalized, or how to widen our welcome and actually open our doors for all people to be truly welcomed and affirmed in our community. Every year we celebrate Pride Month here at MAPC and the wonderful gift the LGBTQIA community is to the world. We hang our rainbows everywhere. We march, we sing, for everyone born a place at the table. And that is a good and holy thing. So we can take a moment and pause and acknowledge just how tremendous of a thing that is for a church to do, for a church to proclaim the radical love of God for all our LGBTQIA kindred without shame or trepidation. You all have worked hard over the years to carve out this place and make this space safe for many, and that is something to celebrate. <coughs> but, sorry, there's a but today. Just because we celebrate pride here at MAPC and truly, truly believe in the radical, in radical hospitality and inclusion, just because we say over and over again, all are welcome, and just because we want to welcome all people, doesn't mean we don't have to always be practicing what it means to do just that and do it well. It doesn't mean that we don't have more to learn or have more ways we need to grow as a welcoming community. And it certainly doesn't mean we are exempt from critique and being called out when people tell us they don't feel welcome here. Doesn't mean we're immune from perpetrating homophobia and particularly transphobia within these walls. Just because we believe all people are beloved and created in the image of God, doesn't mean we automatically know how to love people and show up for them in the ways that they need doesn't mean we automatically understand all the different identities and labels people hold closely to help express who they are to the world. And it certainly doesn't mean we won't ever cause harm and hurt people regardless of our intentions. Because having good intentions and wanting to be inclusive is not the same thing as actually being inclusive. And both can be true. We can and we do truly and deeply believe all people are beloved and worthy and holy images of the divine. And we can also not quite have mastered what it means to be good at living that out. And that doesn't mean we throw in the towel. Just because we want to be inclusive and believe inclusion matters doesn't mean learning more terms, new words, 
or using someone's pronouns are going to come more easily to us. It doesn't mean we won't have to work really hard. It doesn't mean we won't have to always be working and going through the growing pains of learning a new skill. Because living out our faith takes work and endurance and patience and listening to others and a willingness to be corrected and guided by others doing the work who might know more than us. And just like anything, be it crochet or pottery or composing a symphony, we're going to make mistakes and even struggle as we go about it and learn. Because it's an ongoing and lifelong effort. I don't know any artist who has stopped trying to learn and develop and cultivate their skills over time. Because as Stacy said in our call to confession, there is no clear finish line. But we do it anyway, because of our hope in the kingdom of God and the promises of our faith, that God has and is redeeming all things, and we get to be part of that work, even when it hard, is hard, even when there are growing pains. We do it because of our hope our hope that the promises of the kingdom of God and eternal life start now, here, in this sanctuary with rainbow flags, not sometime in the future, in the clouds, but right now, right here, in this place, with a vision and value of open doors and radical welcome. And we get to be part of that. So we keep working and learning and trying to live out our faith and practice over and over again. Even when we struggle and get things wrong or feel like the growing pains just won't ever end because there's always more to do or something new to learn. Because just like Paul reminds the church in Rome that was struggling to widen their welcome and include more people around their tables, that the struggle produces endurance and endurance, character and character, hope. And that hope does not disappoint us. Of course, that's not to say that God wants us to struggle or to be put to shame, but rather that we know that even in the midst of that, even in the midst of our learning and unlearning and working and practice and struggling, we can have peace in the promise of God's redeeming love for the world and the promise that God is still at it, co-creating with us as we strive for the kingdom of God and work to widen our welcome, to be truly inclusive, to actually love our neighbors well, and to practice living out our faith for as long as it takes to get it right, and it will take our whole lives. If you don't get macaroons right on the first try, make some adjustments, do some research, talk to someone who has made them before and made them well, and then just practice over and over again, putting in the effort because it takes time. And the same goes for this radical faith we proclaim and live. It takes practice, it takes risk, but the growing pains are worth it, I promise. May it be so. rise in body or spirit as you are able and join me in affirming our faith together. We believe in a sacred power within and around us, the Holy Spirit who calls us forth.
You may be seated. Apologies for my hacking. I promise I do not have COVID. Uh, I am having allergies that are just wretched right now. So, uh, so I'm not actually weeping, nor am I COVIDing you. All right. Anyway, we, uh, we receive from God many gifts as a body of the community of faith, and we are invited to give back some of those gifts uh, through our service, through our offerings. Uh, and at this time, I'm going to call Ellen forward to give our moment permission and talk about one of the ways that some people have been serving in this church and some new things that are coming about. Good morning. I think we can all agree that Mount Auburn is a special place. And we want other people to know about our unique faith community. We want them to realize whoever they are and whatever they believe, they belong here. We want them to feel comfortable and joy in sharing our spiritual and faith journeys together. So we know when people are searching for a new church, they often Google look on the internet and see what websites come up. And it is this um, first connection, this digital connection, that can be their first imp impression of a church. And it can be a, uh, a, a lasting positive impression when they find uh, something that conveys the right feel, tone, and message. So one of the things that we learned during the pandemic, of course, is that a clear, uh, compelling, and contemporary online and social media presence is more important for our church than ever before. And that's why our, the Community Outreach Committee asked and received from session approval to do two things, to refresh the Mount Auburn brand and to redesign and relaunch our website. So Lynn Haley and I are going to share more details about this work behind the new logo, which you see on uh, your bulletin this morning, um, the brand, and the relaunch of our website um, in the Encounters session uh, previous, prior to the service next week. And I hope you all will, enjoy, will join us then for a really interesting discussion and some more information about this effort. Um, but in preparation for that, I just want to leave you with two things. Uh, first, our new logo is a modern expression of the open door. It was informed by our long history of not just being welcome, but full inclusion and radical hospitality. It's also a creative play on our actual front door. And our tagline, fearless love for all people, says it all. No matter who you are or what you believe, we want you to feel that you belong here at Mount Auburn Church and that we will love and support you. So in creating this new look, along with our fabulous designers, we wanted to make sure that we not only communicated hospitality and an invitation to visitors, but we also wanted to develop something that you, our existing members, could embrace, feel energized by, and could be proud of. So I hope you join us next Sunday during Encounters to learn more and see more, and feel free to reach out to myself or Lynn Haley or Pastor Stacy if you have any other questions.
You may be seated. I'm having a little trouble talking, and these are called the prayers of the people, so you're going to help me with them. So I'm going to speak a category, and then you can offer the prayers. Either if you're not comfortable, you can silently pray within, but if you are comfortable, I invite you to speak your prayers aloud in the category that they fit in. Let us pray. God, we offer to you our prayers for this church and for the people in this faith community. We offer to you our prayers for this particular country in which we live. God, we offer to you our prayers for the wider world around us. Thank you, God, for hearing us, for being present with us when we pray, and for inspiring us to act on that which we wish to see in the world. Amen. Amen.
as you leave this place, remember that we are all connected. Go honoring mutuality. Go living in justice. Go committed to learning, practicing, embracing, and growing, even when it's hard. And go celebrating the amazing diversity by which our world is enriched. And go in peace. Amen. Amen.